Hello and welcome to part two of the ASCO residency webinar series entitled Everything You Wanted to Know About Residencies. On part two, we are going to be discussing navigating the residency application and interview process. My name is Dr. Caroline Pate and I serve as the Director of Residency Programs at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Optometry. Here's what we are going to cover in this part of the webinar series. First is going to be applying through OR Match and what the application process looks like. Next, we'll cover how to develop a quality letter of interest. We'll cover letters of recommendation and how to go about obtaining those. We'll talk about the interview process itself. And lastly, we'll cover some tips and tricks, especially as it relates to etiquette along the way. Let's start with the first on this list, which is applying through OR Match. As you can see, the website to OR Match is listed here on the slide. All residency applicants must be registered with OR Match in order to submit applications and participate in the match. The OR Match application service allows applicants to research and apply to multiple programs from a single user-friendly online application. Programs are able to then access a consolidated online portal, which will collect and um, house all of their applications in one place. The OR Match service and matching program provides an orderly process to help applicants obtain positions of their choice and to help programs obtain applicants of their choice. This process is similar to those matching services used in medicine, pharmacy, and dentistry residency programs, to name a few. This is an online tool and it helps coordinate all application materials in one centralized location. Applications can be customized for each residency program and must be submitted by the deadline that is specified by that particular residency program. So let's look at the different components of the residency application itself. So each residency is going to set its own application requirements and deadline dates. This can be found on that particular residency's website, or you can go to the ASCO residency database and look under application requirements for the particular residency program that you are interested in. The OR Match application is going to include several components. First will be a general application form, which is going to contain your contact information, including your phone number and email address, your educational information, like your optometry school that you're attending, as well as your GPA, and NBEO score information that you provide. You can upload to the OR Match application your curriculum vitae, your optometry school transcript, your letter of interest, and again, this can be customized to each program that you're applying to, and the names of three individuals who will be writing letters of reference on your behalf. Now, you can submit your application before your reference writers upload their letters. However, your app application will actually be marked incomplete until all three reference letters attached to the application have been uploaded to the match system by the reference writers. You can monitor the status of your reference letters in the OR match system, and you should follow up with any reference writers who have not provided their letters as the application deadlines approach. Some residency programs require that you include additional information in your application. And again, this can be found directly on that residency program's website or on the ASCO residency directory under application materials. You can include all the supplemental material that is required by a specific residency in a single PDF document, and you can attach a separate PDF for each residency program that you apply to. So if different residencies that you're applying to require or request different supplemental materials, you can prepare and upload different PDF documents for each residency. Just be sure as you're preparing those to give each document a unique and descriptive name so that you know which document to include with each application when you assemble your application on OR Match. Now, OR Match does have a fee of $350, and this includes applications to up to 10 different residency programs. If you choose to apply to more than 10 programs, there's a nominal fee for each additional program that you choose to apply to. 
So I wanted to go over some important dates, and these are the 2024 residency application dates, and these are available also on the OR Match website. Now, keep in mind that each program sets its own application deadline, and it might be different than what is posted on OR Match. So you want to refer to that and follow that as you're preparing your application. The first date that you'll see here on this list is October 4th. That's already come and gone. This was the opening date for OR Match applications. So you are now able to get onto the OR Match website, register, and start preparing your applications for residency programs. December 31st is the recommended deadline that has been set by OR Match to register. Now, as long as you have registered and are in the OR Match system by January 31st, your official verified NBEO score reports showing your highest scores for any parts that you have taken will be sent directly to the programs for which you've applied. Any scores that are received after this date will need to be sent directly to the program. Now, the system is open for rankings on February 12th, 2024 and closes on February 27th at midnight Eastern Standard Time. So you have this window of time between February 12th and February 27th to go ahead and enter your rank order list of the programs that you would like to go to um, the following year. So you would be interested in matching with any of those that you have ranked and listed uh, on your rank order sheet. Now, it's important to try to make sure that you submit your rankings early and don't wait up until the deadline. You want to make sure you do this early so that you have gotten confirmation of your submission of rankings and you can ensure you are in the match. If you miss that February 27th deadline, you will miss the match and not be included in that match algorithm. So the date that everybody will be looking forward to is March 3rd. That is when applicants find out who they have matched with and programs find out which applicant they have matched with and will be their next resident. Now, on March 5th, you will receive an email. And if you have happened to not match with any of your ranked programs, or if a program did not fill all of its available positions for the residency year that is coming up, then March 5th starts the post-match process. Let's talk about the different components of the OR Match application, first being your NBEO scores. So in order to start applying through OR Match, you have to have a NBEO Part 1 score that is required to be entered at the time of your application. Now, Parts 2, 3, the ISC or TMOD could be entered if you have those scores available, but they are not required. You can always add these in at a later date when you receive the scores. Also, if you have chosen to retake part one and obtain a new score, then applicants are also able to update their application with updated NBEO part one scores when that is uh, retaken and the new score is available. If you are unable to take part three prior to the rank deadline, again, that date was February 27th, it is encouraged to contact the NBEO to let them know that you are applying for residencies to see if you can be accommodated. Another outlet could be to discuss with your director of residency programs at your institution that you are unable to get a time to take part three before that rank order deadline. It is encouraged for you to have that score in hand. Certainly, it makes your application stronger if you have a passing score in part three come time of match. And actually, some programs actually do require having a passing score on all three parts of boards before they will consider ranking you as a applicant or candidate. In addition to the NBEO scores that you're going to provide on the OR Match application, NBEO is going to directly provide your score report data to OR Match. So as long as you are in that system before January 31st, the uh, NBEO is going to do that on your behalf, and that will be sent in February. Um, only the highest scores are going to be reported to those residency programs. Now, residencies may request additional information from applicants, including your score report breakdown. That also includes how many attempts you may have had on boards. 
Your curriculum vitae is another important part of your application materials. Now, a CV is similar to a residency, but it is more detailed and highlights your professional career. At this point, it is okay for this to be over one page in length, and actually this is a permanent work in progress that you are going to continually update throughout your professional career as an optometrist. It should highlight your professional education, training, and experience. So it should include your optometry school, your undergraduate education, and any other graduate degrees that you might have obtained. Um, as far as training and experience goes, it would be wise to list where you've done your externships and even any internal rotations, special rotations that you might have had in your clinic, especially as it relates to that specialty area or residency that you are interested in. Include any leadership roles, honors, awards, presentations or publications or research or organizational affiliations. So essentially all of your extracurricular activities that you would like to highlight on your CV. I think it gives the person reading your CV a better picture of your personality, your character, um, and ways that you are involved in the profession. Including your exam scores on your CV is not necessary. Um, program directors are going to receive this information through OR Match. Now, remember that the visual impact of your CV sends an important message about you and your attention to detail. You really only have that one good first chance to make a good first impression. So work with a mentor, ask for advice and review of your CV before you submit it. Double and triple check for any spelling or grammatical mistakes that might be on there. Certainly, you want to make sure that you have this CV polished before you submit it. A letter of interest must be included with every application that you submit, and you can customize this to each unique residency program that you are applying to. You must up upload this to the OR Match application as a PDF document. And um, it should include or convey the following. Number one, you want to convey in your letter of interest why you should be matched with that particular residency. What makes you a good candidate? And kind of show that you've done your research. You know, what made this residency specifically stand out to you? Why are you applying to it? Highlight your accomplishments and experiences in this area and what would make you the best candidate for that particular program. Um, demonstrate your interest and show how much you've thought about your future optometric education by being detailed, honest, and enthusiastic in your letter. Show how this residency will help you achieve your personal and professional goals down the line. Where do you want to see yourself in five years, for example, and how will this residency help you get there? Your letter of interest should be about one page in length, and you should address it to the specific residency coordinator or supervisor for that particular program that you are applying to. Next, we're going to talk about letters of recommendation. And I can't stress enough that you want to choose individuals who are going to be writing your letter of recommendation or reference carefully. You want to pick somebody that knows you as a person, but also can speak to your clinical abilities. So somebody that you have had in clinic, obviously our residencies are advanced clinical training, and you're going to be spending a lot of time in patient care. So you want somebody to be able to comment on your ability in that area. So What's going to happen is you are going to submit the reference writer's name and email address on the OR Match application, and then they will then receive a notification to upload their letter of reference on your behalf to the application website. Uh, you will not have access or be able to see the letter that has been written for you. It's important to ask the people that you would like to write those letters of reference uh, early, give them plenty of time and give them a deadline when you would like that letter completed by. If possible, if you can talk to them in person, that's preferred. And then you wanna follow up with them by formal email um, if they've agreed to write that letter of recommendation on your behalf. And you wanna specify in that email information about the residency you are applying to, Again, the deadline or date that this is due, who that letter should be addressed to, 
And then also it was probably a good idea to give them a copy of your CV. And that way um, they'll also know specific areas that they might want to highlight that they might not have already known about you. They can include some of those things in their letter too. Um, when this process is over, I would definitely follow up with your letter writers with a formal thank you, as well as after the match has actually happened, many of the people that write letters on your behalf don't know where you landed. They don't have access to the match list. So it would be nice to follow up one more time just to thank them again for writing those letters and let them know which program you matched into. So the next stage of residency application will actually be the residency interview. And most residency interviews are very, very pleasant experiences. It allows the programs to learn just as much about you as you get to learn about the program by visiting them during the interview. So with that being said, most programs are encouraging on-site interviews, although there still are several out there that are allowing virtual interviews. The format is really going to vary from program to program, so it's in your best interest to do your research, talk to current residents or past residents to find out what their interview experience was like for that particular residency. You know, some programs are going to invite every single residency applicant to come on site and interview, and they'll customize it to a day or time of the year that works really good with your schedule. Others will only invite qualified applicants, so not everybody gets an interview, and some may only do interviews on one day, and you're asked to come on that particular day, and that's when they do all of their residency interviews for the year. So there's really no standard format, but you should anticipate at least during the interview process, you're going to get a tour of the facilities, you're going to be able to meet with the program coordinator, who you'll be working with on a day-to-day -day basis, including the program faculty, as well as the current residents that are there. And you might even have the opportunity to spend some time in clinic shadowing the residents that are there. Uh, some interviews might include a sit-down time where you have maybe a mini quiz or even case discussions with the uh, interviewing faculty and program coordinators. They want to see how you'll think through cases, especially relating to some of the more common things you're going to see as a resident. So here are some tips for a successful residency interview. Remember, everybody enters the interview with the same goal in mind. You want to be the top of that program's rank order list, okay? So there's really no secret formula to do this, but um, these are just some basic principles and general guidelines. Number one is to do your homework and prepare in advance. The first impressions you make and your answers to common questions are going to have an impact on the outcome of your interview. So you want to do your background research on who you're going to be meeting with. Look at the program's website in advance. Know who the key people are that you are going to be interviewing with. Don't forget that the program's also going to be doing their homework on you before you arrive. They're going to review your application materials, your board scores, your transcripts. And also, they probably are going to be looking at your online or social media presence. So make sure that that reflects an accurate representation of what you want to convey to your potential residency site. Number two, be yourself. You know, you're going to likely be nervous, but remember you're interviewing them to decide if the residency is a good fit for you, just like they're interviewing you to see if you're a good fit for them. So you need to get a feel if this is going to be a right fit at the end of the day. Number three, ask thoughtful questions and prepare your answers to expected questions. So the first part here, asking thoughtful questions. You know, information on things like program salary, benefits, whether or not the resident takes call, all of that can be found in advance on the program website. Asking those during an interview reflects poorly on you that you haven't done your background research. So instead, impress your interviewers by asking questions that are going to help you evaluate the program as a good fit for your education and your career goals. Come prepared with about six to seven meaningful questions that you would like to better help you know more about that program. Now practice your answers to expected questions. On every residency interview, you should be ready to answer, why do you wanna do a residency? Or why do you want to do that particular residency? 
You should also be prepared to answer the very typical tell us about yourself question that allows you the opportunity to highlight a little bit more about you than what's on your CV and what makes you unique. Maybe talk about some interesting cases you've seen in clinic, maybe some that didn't go well, but you learned something from them. Um, maybe how you work in stressful situations, how you handle feedback, how you work in groups, those kind of questions. And lastly, I also want you to think about where you see yourself down the road in five years or 10 years. Where do you want your career to be? And how will that particular residency program help you get there? For number four, practice proper OR match etiquette. While it is okay to let a program know that you intend to rank them, it is unethical to tell you them how you plan to rank order them. In other words, you cannot tell a program that you plan to put them at the top of your rank order list. On the other hand, you also cannot ask the program directly if they will plan to rank you, okay? So both of those are considered um, violations or unethical behaviors related to OR match. What you can do is tell a program that you really enjoyed your interview time and that you are very interested in the possibility of completing a residency at their location next year and you are looking forward to the match, you just can't tell them where you're ranking them on your rank order list. And then lastly, um, follow up and thank the program director and the key faculty and the residents or whoever you had the opportunity to meet with during the interview process. As you're going through the interviews, ask for business cards for different people that you've met with so you'll have their contact information at hand. Use your thank you notes as a chance to highlight important points that remind the interviewer of your time with them and of your interest in their program. Also stay in communication with the program. You might interview early on in this process. Remember OR match applications are open from October into applications go even into February sometimes when people are still interviewing before that rank order deadline. So if you interviewed very early on, say in October, go ahead and stay in communication with that program. Send follow-up emails as you get closer to that rank order deadline, definitely to let the program know that you're still interested in them. That also gives you the chance to ask any other follow-up questions that you might have thought of since you last uh, talked to the program during your interview process. So I'm going to leave you with this statement here. Completing an optometric residency is an invaluable experience providing advanced clinical training under an experienced mentor in a specialty area of interest. Residency training opens doors to you and helps shape your career in ways that you cannot even imagine. I thank each of you for listening and wish you the best of luck as you enter this exciting time of the residency application and interview process.